All right, guys, today in today's video, what I'm gonna be talking to you about and giving you some information about is about the tools that you use when you're doing SPS programming to maintain battery voltage. Uh, this is just a brief press release. We're gonna go over some of what this is and I'm gonna unbox and show you a, a less expensive alternative product to do this. So basically GM and Medtronics is the company that partnered on a tool for this kind of programming support. And if you go through these kind of articles, what you'll find is they refer to this thing, this tool as an EL49642 SPS programming support tool. And basically what the purpose of this tool is, is to provide precise voltage control and clean power you know, limiting fluctuations and spikes as well as voltage drops and loss of voltage. And they talk about how even a fully charged vehicle battery can't supply the necessary power for a successful SPS event and a reliable external power supply is required. And then GM has also stressed the importance of maintaining proper voltage during SPS programming events, right? Uh, this particular tool is based on the Medtronic's PSC 550 power supply charger which is used to provide clean and reliable power for vehicle programming while you're, you're, you can also charge the battery at the same time. Now, there's a couple of tech links I'm gonna show you so you can get an idea what this thing looks like, right? So here's a tech link from 2005 from GM, and this is what it looks like, right? You got this kind of power supply looking product. It sits in a bag like this. It's got some cables to connect to the battery. It's got a fan in the back. And the sole purpose of this device is to keep clean, noise-free DC voltage that you can uh, that you have to have when you're doing programming. So you're updating a calibration on a module, like a powertrain control module, for example. There's some other features with this particular uh, product from Medtronics that they get into, but uh, the main thing that we want to focus on is that when used during programming, the PSC supports loads as well as charges the vehicle's battery. Right. So when the vehicle's charged, the charger acts as a regulated power supply to sustain loads and offset any parasitic drains. And then when you take a look at GM talking about recommendations for successful module programming, and this is as recent as 2017, one of the things they get into here when they talk about this is there's a bunch of different things that they talk about, but what's specific to this product is maintaining a stable battery voltage during programming by installing the SPS programming support tool. They want you to make sure as a dealer or as a mechanic shop that you have this particular tool so that any fluctuation, spiking over voltage or loss of voltage interrupts the programming. They want this tool in place to prevent that. Now, what I usually did is the alternative where you can connect a second battery with a pair of jumper cables. And you know that can serve as an alternative if you don't have this tool. But I've always wanted to get one of these tools and today we're gonna go through what's involved. And again, here's another picture for this, right? So you get an idea what it is. And this is not just GM, right? Just want to show you a couple other things. Here's a bulletin from Jaguar. They recommend the exact same product. Here's a bulletin from Volvo. They also recommend the exact same product. They're just kind of showing it in the case. Here's kind of a, like a larger picture here, a little bit of a breeze out here today uh, showing this. Now besides this 55 amp version, there's also a 700 amp version, right? So there's two of these and actually the Volvo guys uh, specify, you know, both. And this is just a cover page on the PSC 700, which is a 700, um, 70 amp version rather. So now what I'm gonna show you is the product we're gonna be unboxing today. And that's from a company called PowerMax. And PowerMax basically um, goes directly after this same space with a less expensive product line, right? So they've got a 55 that matches the PSC 550 from Medtronics. They've got a PMBC 75, which is the one we're going to actually show the unboxing on. Then they got a 100 and a 120 in terms of the amperage capabilities. And the advantages that this has over the Medtronics offering, for example, you get 15 foot cables on the on on, on the, this versus six on the Medtronics. The other thing that you get is you get adjustable voltage between 13 and 16 and a half, which you don't get on the Medtronics. If you wanted something higher, there's only a 55 amp and a 70 from Medtronics. Of course, they got a whole line and they got a 75 instead of a 70. But the most interesting feature I like is this little thing here, which is actually a digital display of what you're putting out, which you don't have on the Medtronics. We kind of go back and just kind of compare. Uh, a little photo here just kind of gives you a side by side of what these guys are. So I also like the handle that's built into this. So let's take a look at the PowerMax and go ahead and unbox it and get it put together here. So it will come in a box just like this. You know, it's just going to have a, a label on here, 
uh, from PowerMax and the particular type that's installed. And what you're going to get inside is you're going to get your 15-foot cables in a little zip carrying case, a little instruction manual, and then here is what the unit is going to look like sitting inside here. Right. Now I opened the box to make sure that everything was okay, but this is the first time I'm trying to get it out. All right. Let's get these boxes out of the way. Just kind of get this bag off of here. We can get a closer look at this guy. Now, one thing that's not really nice, I guess, I see here is it's not nice when you unbox something that your label is not all the way down on the product, but. Now that's a minor problem here, but we can see we've got the handle, we've got the output reading, we've got a power switch, got our AC cable here, and then we've got our connections for our charging cables. We've got three fuses, looks like we've got an LED to let us know when it's going on, and we got a lug for a chassis ground here. There's a couple of tabs on the sheet metal casing here that I guess you could use to mount some feet, and that's definitely something I'm probably going to do, although I'd probably put some adhesive feet on here. The Midtronics does have those rubber feet, and I think that's nice to have versus just this kind of bare metal. Let's go ahead and get these guys hooked up. Just need a simple flathead screwdriver. Open these up. I'm guessing this little sticker here is just letting us know some information about the fuses. And again, that's very interesting that you know these stickers aren't holding on there too well. But this particular one, the Medtronics guys would run you even used over $300 for the 55 amp one. And you can get something like this in the same amperage from PowerMax for brand new under 200. Pay a little bit more for the 75, but far, far less expensive than the Medtronics. Should be capable of accomplishing the exact same thing. All right, that's it as far as assembly. Once we get these tightened down, we're going to be ready to go. You know, another thing I guess I, I, I don't really like on this, just looking at it, is I would have preferred that the positive cables be red rather than yellow. Um, but, you know, it's you can't mess it up, right, because you got the red here and you got the red here, and they just use yellow. All right, guys, here's a view of the voltage adjustment settings that are on the side of the unit. Another key feature that's not something you would get on the Medtronics one. And then here's a, a view of the bottom, right? Not super happy about this made in China part, but you know, that's kind of like the norm for some of these technologies today. Sometimes it's okay, a lot of times it's not, but I think in this case we'll be all right for this particular type of product. All right guys, and here's a, another view of the rear area. Um, this is some Kind of view of the circuitry inside through the cooling vents and the three fuses that you have on here they're user serviceable of course and then here's a view of the opposite side where the cooling fan is located on the same side as the ac adapter cable all right so we got it all set up we're going to clip off these uh, retaining ties and then we're going to do some voltage checks and we're going to try it out all right, guys, we've uh, got these cables freed from their zip ties, and we've got them secured. We've got our AC outlet hooked up, so we've got power. And the first thing we're going to do here in the manual, they talk about just doing a simple voltmeter test just to make sure everything looks like it's in order. So disconnect all loads and battery on the converter charger and attach a multimeter between the positive and negative and then energize the AC. And verify, da -da 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 -da, verify that you're getting 14.6 plus or minus 0.2 volts DC. 
So that's what we're going to go do here. We've got our trusty voltmeter out. Hook up the negative and the positive. Set it for volts. All right, we're going to power this guy on over here. All right, he's saying 14.7. The meter's saying 14.82. That's within our, zero, our 0 0.02 specification from the manufacturer. So it looks like we're good to go here voltage-wise. On the front here, you can see, hopefully you can see, I don't know if it'll come out really well. You got this kind of green LED. If we were to shut it off, it goes off, right? So that lets you know when it's on. And that's it. There's really nothing else to it, right? You hook this guy up to the battery. The next time you pull out your Tech 2 or your MDI and you do a calibration update with GM's SPS from acdelcotds.com or even TIS2000, and you should be good to go in lieu of just raw taking jumper cables and putting a battery in, with, uh, in, in series with it. I hope this helps you out. If you've got comments about this product, if you've used it, or even if you've used the Medtronics, love to hear from you below. Let us know how that worked out. If you found this video useful, please think about giving this a like. And if you like videos of this type, go ahead and think about subscribing because I do one every week on something of this nature. Thanks for watching, guys.